You mean the NBA parade? <laughs> just parades in general. I just, I'm just thinking parades. Yes. Hell no, it's not overrated. I, I've never been to one. I have no desire. You've never won a championship. You haven't either. I know. That's why they're overrated. <laughs> Shit, I want to be part of that. Oh, that's why I just get fucked. Yeah. If, you if, part of that. if your boy Nick uh, wins a championship, you can friends and family on the float. No, friends and family, I get the ring. You don't want to be on yeah, the float? I, you I, I want to be on the float, but I don't think they're going to land me on the float. I don't want to get Kevin Hart up there. <laughs> hey, 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 Relax. Dude. <laughs> Welcome back to Out of Bounds. I'm Pierce Simpson. Of course, on today's episode, we'll preview the upcoming NBA Finals that features part four of the Golden State Warriors versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. But before we do all that, I'm joined here by Mr. Complex Sports Editor and resident roaster of our friend Chops from Everyday Struggle, Mr. Adam Caparel. Cap, how you feeling, brother? Doing all right today. Very much on brand that you're going to slander Chops in his Cleveland Cavaliers ring? Has to be done. Has to be done. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Mr. Gilbert Arenas is here. I I was going to say three-time NBA champion, all-NBA member. All that, but you know, I just want to say, give it a rinse. What's happening? Oh my God, how you got feeling? My, about? Got my Cleveland on. You, that, that's what you gonna say? It is Cleveland. <laughs> no, I thought it was when I went to the. That's, that's champions. Oh, oh, so the Cleveland's the champions. All right, I'm oh, in it. The foreshadowing who you might pick. So you like wearing Eastern? No, 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 no. You like wearing Eastern Conference Finals paraphernalia? No, 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 no. no. It's just Wizards color, so we're just going. Oh, that's what we're gonna say. This is the Wizards colors. Okay. They came out with the new shoes. The little hair. I don't even wear forces. Look, show right them to the camera. Oh yeah, yeah. The okay. little forces, little. I don't. They just came out, so you know I had to go ahead and cop them. You got a Nike deal? You're not telling us. Who? You. Yeah, you want a lot of Nike? A lot of Nike uh, gear. I got, I got, I got a Foot Locker hookup with a credit card deal. <laughs> Did you be saying this to the world? What, I go to Foot Locker, they give me the shoes, I get my credit card. Great cleanup. Outstanding. Outstanding. You like that, right? Outst- you know what? Give me some of that. Right. Outstanding cleanup on that one. I was, man. Fuck up my plug. <laughs> Foot Locker, sponsor the show. Yes, I, right, exactly. Uh, but, fellas, we have to recap the game that took place last night where we finally have the winner of the Western Conference with the Golden State Warriors ahead into the NBA Finals. Once again, after defeating the Houston Rockets in Game 7, at one point they were trolling 11 points but ended up taking the win. 101 to 92 with Houston going 7 of 44 from the three-point line during the game at one point in the third and fourth quarter. They went 0 for 27 from the field on three-pointers. 0 for 27. That's horrendous. Kevin Durant led the Warriors with 35, five rebounds, five assists. Despite his foul trouble, three fouls in the first quarter. Klay Thompson went for 19 points, 8 of 13 shooting from the field. Steph also chipped in with 27 points, seven three-pointers, a lot of which came in the second half when Golden State was up. James Harden, despite the loss, he had 32 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists. Trevor Ariza went scoreless, 0 for 12 from the field, and 0 for 9 from the three-point line. Very Terry Rozier-like, like we saw earlier this week in the Eastern Conference Finals. But, uh, fellas, we we know what happened in game set. Why are you clapping? No, you got to applaud. You got to applaud Houston. (laughs) For missing that many threes? No, no, no. If if you're going to go play bad in the game seven, I mean, across the board. You go all out. Every player, (laughs) the coaching staff not making any adjustments, that's the way you do it. I mean, Jesus Christ. Me? I'm upstairs? Whole fucking stats (laughs) fire. The whole whole fucking stats fire. If you didn't learn from game five, no, no, no. Game six, yeah. that second half chucking threes gets your ass whooped, and you come out and do the same exact thing. Yeah. Like, I, I said it, the f- first team that actually goes and just attacks the basket is going to win this game. That's what exactly happened. And yeah. for some reason, both teams was chucking, and then a timeout happened, and then first thing, boom. But, but Golden State starts driving, and these fucking dumb, silly shits <laughs> kept chucking the fucking three. But Gil, we we the Golden, uh, Houston was up eleven points despite shooting terribly from the field. Obviously, Golden State came back to win the game. Did Houston just run into a scenario where live by the three, die by the three? This wasn't even live. This wasn't. This was die by the three. There was no. You were living playing basketball. Yeah. You hit a few threes. You was taking it to the basket. You was hitting. You were playing basketball. The second half came around, and it just seemed like we're gonna force this three down their throat. Yeah. And I mean, I've seen. I haven't seen bad shot selection in my life than I seen tonight. Uh, Cap. CP3 obviously missed game seven with the hamstring strain. There was reports before the game that if he even won this series, he wouldn't be available to play until game three of the NBA Finals. So with CP3 out, James Harden carrying the load, and the game going down the way it went down, is there more questions for this trio of CP3, James Harden, and Mike D'Antoni who have had failures in the playoffs? 
Well, I think we'll take CP3 out of the equation here because we can't, we can't put any blame and, and any uh, responsibilities on the performances in Game 6 and Game 7 on CP3. Yeah. He's out of the equation. Right. So as Gil said, yes, the fall has to go toward Dan Tony because you saw absolutely no adjustments whatsoever, and the star player for the Rockets, Harden, yeah. was taking stupid shots like the rest of, his, rest of his teammates. So showing no leadership skills and just no wherewithal whatsoever to do what needed to be done, put your head down, drive to the basket. Yeah. Facilitate the ball, dish it out, and do what got you the wins in the earlier games in the series. So it was it was sheer stupidity, and it's amazing to me that we actually saw the Rockets play a great half of basketball. Yeah. We saw Steve Kerr's comments after the first quarter that that was the worst uh, quarter of basketball the Warriors played the entire year. Yeah. They got off to a great start in the first quarter. They played pretty well in the second quarter. <clears throat> great first half of basketball, and you played the exact opposite. You played absolute shit in yeah. the second half. It was startling how bad it was. It. Uh- Gil, as a, as a former player, at what point do you just pull your teammates to the side and say, hey, stop taking the damn three points because we've missed 27 at this point? It, 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 I, remember I told you I just don't trust James Harden in situations like this because, yes, he's a great scorer, but even when he's balling, it's still like, why are you – what is this shot for? Yeah. So he gets Clay Thompson's fourth foul. He has Clay on him again. He picks to get a switch. For what? Go ahead and begin. What was the point of that? You have the guy that you need. And in the third quarter, you already have three fouls on him. Attack him. If you get him out of the game, that that cuts off Golden State's one of their legs. Yeah. That's what that's what you needed. That's what I said. There was no adjustment. There was no thought process and nothing Dan Tony was doing tonight. Like Trevor Reza, 0 for 12, 41 minutes. At what point do you say, you just don't have it tonight. I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm seeing the man with a wide open layup passes it out to a three. For Just get your easy yeah. point. Like It's like they refuse to get easy baskets tonight. You'd imagine that if Chris Paul's in the lineup that you don't see the immense amount of stupid shots no. that the Rockets yeah. would have taken. You would have, you would have seen him facilitate a little bit more, calm them down, get them in better sets. And we saw that shot uh, that TNT got where CP3 slammed his hand, <laughs> probably broke his fist on yeah, the chair when they were just chucking and ducking in yeah. the third quarter, like, without a band. So, I mean, the amount of frustration that, uh, you know, must be coursing through CP3's veins right now is probably at an astronomical level. I, I, I've never seen bad basketball. I mean, I've seen a lot of bad basketball, like when you see, like, uh, Chicago versus New Jersey. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and they go, like, six minutes with just... But it, it'd be like three layup, miss layups and shit like that. Yeah. But I've never seen high level basketball players in the Western Conference finals, finals at home shoot seven. the shots they were shooting. I mean, you know, it's like you got to know that you there's certain games you just can't do that on. We, Are you supposed to play smart basketball? Cause, cause every possession counts. Yeah, we clowned on the Warriors last week for their poor execution down the stretch that yeah. we call like college level execution. Yeah. What was this middle school middle level school, execution yeah, yeah, from like the, from the Rockets? Like, it was it was horrendous. Like James Harden scores, a, uh, took one bad shot, another bad three, came down layup, came down behind the back pass Capella. Okay, that's what you need to do. Three, three, three. Like, what the, the fuck? The only time they seemingly consistently went to the basket was, like, the final two minutes of the game. Yeah. When, when it kind of got close a little bit. And, but, again, if they went to the basket with a seven-point deficit, you could have made it even closer. And really if they went to, if and they, they just didn't do that. If half the threes, if, all, if half their threes would have been half mid-ranger layups, they would have been up 20 at one point. Because the, t- the tough part is, and the thing that will keep Rocket, Rockets fans up at night is the fact that you lost by nine points, but you're, yep. you're seven for 44 from the three but point that's what I said, you If you take it to the rack. But that's what I said. Think about the logic of it. Golden State was not playing that well. No. You were just playing that bad that anybody could have walked in and there beat you. Like, you missed 27 threes in a row. Yeah. Like, if someone said, yo, go, uh, um, Houston missed... 27 threes in a row. You would have thought they got blown up by 40. Easy. Not a nine-point But they say they lost by nine. Even the last minute of the game was stupidity. You're up. You're down seven. No urgency. You're walking the ball up the court. Trevor Reza has it. Instead of going, just go. They're not even playing defense at this point. Golden State actually thinks this game is over. Go make a layup. He's waiting for James Harden to mully on down the court, waste 10, 15 seconds, to chuck a three. And, I know, and I'm like... Yeah, I know shooting 40-plus threes is on brand for the Rockets, yeah. but in a Game 7 situation where there's no tomorrow guaranteed, 
you have to make adjustments on the fly. You have to. And when it's just not working, you have to try something else. And the Rockets did that for like like a grand total of like 30 seconds yeah. the entire second half. So, yeah, D'Antoni, you know, I don't know who you really want to put this on. We can blame Harden big time. We can blame D'Antoni Coaching. big time. But I think you have to lean towards the sword has to fall on D'Antoni for this. Coach, you, 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 take, you go 0 for 5, 0 for 6, 0 for 7, maybe 0 for 10. Yo, time out. Don't shoot no more fucking threes. All right? <laughs> I don't give a fuck if I don't give a fuck if you're by your fucking self. Attack this basket. Yeah. Attack. I guarantee you Kurt told that him because Curry started attacking the basket with layups. You you had um Kevin Durant, you know, attacking the basket after a timeout. So you know he said, yo, get to the basket. So a guy that won coach a team to over sixty wins, you think he might fall on the sword this offseason and get let go? Uh, they're, they're gonna I would have fired him. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I'll put it this way. I don't see D'Antoni getting fired. I mean, we've seen he's not going to get fired. Today. But but yeah, does he deserve the majority of the blame right now? I'm firing him because you allowed that. Yeah. That means like you just don't like I've said it from playoff started. He does not adjust well. He does not adjust well to any game plan. No. It's just the same game plan. The same fucking series. And a guy to be as well decorated as he is in the regular season and have so many great players over the years. Uh, he should let us always he should let short. It, he should just let us assistant coaches coach during the playoffs then. You coach regular season, <laughs> you coach in the fucking playoffs because this motherfucker just. <laughs> oh, man. 41 minutes over 12 and you didn't make an adjust. Like. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Congratulations. I'm with you. <laughs> donkey. I'm do- <laughs> fucking donkey. That was a donkey. Oh, damn. But I see why I scored 50 fucking <laughs> four points on him after I told him I'm going to score 50 points on him. He was that stubborn not to, not to double me. No adjustments in that game. No either. adjustments in that no, game. Just you. let me go fucking 54 on you. After I said I'm coming for 50. 50. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to see. Okay, after after twenty something at halftime, I'm pretty sure I'm on pace. Well, <laughs> well, we know why the other coach and that coach being Steve Kerr is heading to yet another NBA Finals as we have the fourth straight year. The Golden State Warriors will take on the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals with Game One beginning in Oakland on Thursday. LeBron James is going to his eighth straight NBA Finals at this point in time. Is his eighth straight? It could be nine at this point. It's just so many numbers. It's outrageous. LeBron is he's, he's there. He's this is ridiculous at this point. Uh, The Cleveland Cavaliers obviously wrapped up their series with the Boston Celtics on Sunday. LeBron James, if he wins his NBA Finals, will earn his fourth title in his career. LeBron James is 10th all-times in finals games played with 45, fifth in minutes with 19-20, third in points with 12-47, and second in assists with uh, 339. So now that we have the NBA Finals set, we know what game one will be. We know that the 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 Cleveland Cavaliers will head to Oracle Arena. Do we have any shot the Cleveland Cavaliers can take game one of this series? I mean, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to be disciplined in the game plan. Yeah, I don't know what their game plan is, but I know what my game plan is. What is your game plan? <laughs> oh, mine for LeBron and the Cavaliers. <laughs> Give it to don't LeBron. Don't do Cavaliers. nothing Houston did. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> Two is, if you're gonna play small ball, and you're gonna switch on everything, that means that takes away away all their back doing, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, all the key plays that they're used to running during regular season. Knowing that um, with Kerr, with Curry, Mm -hmm. any pick and roll he does with a five man, just double him. Don't let him switch on to the five man because he's going to do the same move every time. Shake, shake, shake. Make the the big man back up so he can shoot his jumper. Yeah. Keep, if you keep him from doing that, then you keep at least 12 points out of his pocket of guaranteed, back, of guaranteed shot. So if he does a pick and roll with like a JaVel or some five man that does not have lateral movement, just double him, get the ball out of his hands. With Klay Thompson, knowing Klay can't dribble at this point, if he backs you up, just a turnaround jumper. You can just pre-jump. Yeah. No more than one dribbles for Klay. Other than that... No shot, <laughs> no shot that he, if he looks at that rim, he's going to put it up. So when you're when you're closing out, just close out with your hands already up, mm-hmm. knowing he's not going to go anywhere. He'll pump fake you and just let you jump over him, and he's just going to shoot it. With KD, knowing he goes right a lot, when he goes right for the pull-up, instead of challenging up, only Iggy was good at this when he was at OKC. Just go straight to his pocket. Yeah. Make him come from the bounce and make him pull the ball over. Right. That'll alter his shot more than you trying to jump on a seven-footer. Yeah. Little keys like that, if they can stay can 
if you can stay consistent on those three, right. it keeps them from just coming so at you. I have two questions, and, and those tidbits that you're giving the Cleveland Cavaliers to hopefully win game one are very impressive. But if you're playing small, do you replace Tristan Thompson with Jeff Green to maybe yes. stay athletic? Okay, so you would, you would put Jeff Green in the starting yeah. lineup. Okay. And I'm going to tell Jeff Green, no matter what move Curry does, don't back up. Don't back up. The backup. Okay. Just keep him crowded because he's not fast enough to go around you. And last year we saw the Cleveland Cavaliers when they played the Golden State Warriors in game one, gave a lot of rim runs to Kevin Durant and Draymond Green. Do they adjust that this year? Yeah. You know, when you play a team two times in a row, a certain style, yeah. and that's protect the three, and then they bring in Kevin Durant. <laughs> Kevin Durant. <laughs> you know, they're not you they wasn't used to what he did. So, you know, it caught him it, it got him off guard. But knowing what they what he does now. I mean, they should be pretty adjusted. I mean, if Golden State playing the way they played in this series, they're vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Yeah. Cap, what do you see from Golden State that makes them seem a little off and vulnerable, like Gilbert Arenas mentioned? Because they don't seem like the juggernaut of years past, like we envisioned yeah. them. I mean, obviously, again, I'll, I'll point to the fact that I still don't think Curry's 100% healthy. Obviously, Iguodala's situation is a little bit iffy going into the next series. And for whatever reason, they just haven't quite, you know, found that next gear that we've seen from them in years past. So I don't know whether that's just malaise or being tired with, yeah. with these long, long runs to the players over the last several years, but something slightly off, and maybe the chemistry is just not quite the way it used to be. In, is it in the bench the depth? Is it you know, so it, might, it just might have been just this series of Houston forcing them or not even forcing them, just making them adjust to play a one-on-one style, because in this in this game in the second half they played their offense. But I, I think it was I think you hit the nail on the head uh, when you were watching the game. You said Golden State's not moving like they used to, uh-huh. and I think that's what makes switching so effect, effective for Houston. I think Cleveland can take in their series in the NBA Finals to just switch everything so it stops the back doors, it stops the moving out the ball, so you and, just switch. And then just knowing what those those tendencies are with those players, you know, yeah. if you. If you can stop Kevin Durant from getting easy shots, you can keep Klay Thompson from just catching and shooting. Yeah. Make him put the ball on the floor one, two, three. Like, Clay, like if Clay had 20 points on all layups, I would say that's the game plan. Yeah. You know, because if, if he's making all layups, that means he's not hitting back-to-back-to-back threes. Curry is not hitting back-to-back-to-back threes. Yeah. Let this team beat you by making six and under on the three-point line. Yeah, and, that, and that's the tough if you can If you can keep them to six threes and under, you win. And it's also narrative when these two teams play. It's like, should, should Cleveland slow the game down? And like last year's NBA Finals, like every single game afterwards, it's like, should you guys have slowed it down? Next day of practice, should you guys slow it down going to the next game, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And they would always say, no, we're better playing fast. We're better, you know, keeping the pace up with the Warriors. But time and time again, it proved that they couldn't keep up with the Warriors. The funny part is I don't think they have a choice as far as the ball handlers that they have on the, on the Cleveland Cavaliers to be able to push the tempo like a Kyrie but did. They're, they're, they're fine with pushing. A, you, you want an open floor game with LeBron. You don't want to keep him in a half court because you're slowing down his momentum. So, But here's the thing, though. If you slow it down, that was effective in Game 7 when they played Boston to make the score, what, 87-79? Yeah, but they don't have a J- but they don't have a one-on-one guy. Please. You know, if they had Kyrie yeah. in that half court, they had, you know, Rose. If they had the old group, I wouldn't mind slowing it down, knowing that shit. They, they can't shoot a jump shot, but <laughs> they might get 100. You know, yeah. it's like this is when he needs that other team. I'm, 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 I'm not sold that this team, the second half group, is better than the first half group. At this point. Right. I'm you shocked know, because this team is even in the NBA Finals at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really am. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's, uh, yeah, I don't. How? I don't think any player that came from the trade actually has done well. In the playoffs. In the playoffs. Well, I mean, George Hill's had some moments. I mean, George Hill, I mean, George Hill is solid, but I don't want him solid. I, either, you need to be good. Either be a bust or be good. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, either take or sit on the bench or take 15 shots. I'm not going to have you in this four or five shots, score 20 today, score three, you know, like, now, there's been a lot, of, a lot of conversation on LeBron James in the GOAT category. Can he live up to the status of the Michael, Michael Jordans and all the legends that came before him? So, Gil, I'll throw it to you first. What does a championship mean for LeBron James and, I guess, his legacy? What does a championship mean for LeBron James and his it's, legacy? It's going to be number four. So that's it? That's, <laughs> that's it. Does, I mean, it, does uh, it have him eclipse anybody? No, no a chip? No. No? Okay. no I, I mean, eclipse or non-eclipse or being a – like – if you're in the 80s or 90s and you're a Jordan fan, you're not going to let LeBron be in front of Jordan. That's just fact. If you're a Kobe fan, you're not going to let Jordan or LeBron be in front of – like, you know, there's yeah. going to always be the argument. LeBron can win 10 rings. Jordan fans are going to say, oh, but look at the look at the, the era he right. played in. Who did he go against? It's the same. I mean, so you're, 
there's no point. You know, if he wins, he wins his home championship. Yeah. <laughs> See you next season. But if, if if he leads this group of guys to win a title against a team like Golden State, do you think it's, it's impressive? It's impressive. <laughs> yeah, fair. It's, it's impressive because I, this is the most impressive team. Because you mean like, this year is his most impressive year yeah. to me as a basketball player to see him start the season with one group, get rid of the whole group, <laughs> and take a whole nother group to the finals with no training camp, no nothing, not knowing nothing about these guys, yeah. and just keep it moving. So that is impressive. Not to mention all the time that Kevin Love's missed, the fact that Tyron Lue had to sit out. Oh, I knocked my pen over. The fact that I was, look, the fact that Tyron Lue missed games. J.R. Smith threw soup at an at a assistant coach. Yeah, it, it's been a soap opera all season. Like, I'm just not even – it's just the players. Like, you know, it takes time for training camp to know your teammates. So, to just go on the fly and just say, all right, out with the in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> out with the old in with the new and just boom and just keep moving. It's like that's impressive. It's crazy. Cap, you went on Twitter and you you uh, you uh thanked frenemy of the show, Nick Young, on being a 2017-2018 NBA <laughs> champion. So, we know where you're thinking the NBA Finals will lead. What does the championship mean for this Golden State Warriors squad? Does it mean they're a dynasty? It means you're hallucinating. Number one, so uh, to get that out of the way. But number two, if it did actually happen, no, he said, he said, I'm one. sorry, I'm sorry, I misheard you. I was, yeah, no, no, hey, 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 we switch him, we switch him, we switch him. Oh, that good. means right. Cavs is winning. Hey. <laughs> all right. The question that we have on our cards right here is, what are we watching for as the Cavs set to take on the Warriors in the finals? I'm watching if there's a game five. Okay, if we get to a game five, that'll be miraculous. But to answer another question on our cards here, a championship means blank for LeBron. I think it would mean the most amazing individual run by any player in NBA history. Because, again, to see where, how far this team has come from, how much of a shit show it was in January, February, the trade deadline, remaking the team on the fly, the fact that we had you know, LeBron facing elimination situations in multiple, scenario, multiple series, I should say, in the yeah. playoffs, and the fact that he's risen his game or taken his game to such a high level, these 40-point performances, yeah. triple-doubles, carrying this crappy team on his back to another yeah. NBA Finals, an A-straight NBA Finals, the greatest single individual run in regular season and postseason history in uh, NBA. Yeah. Yes, I mean, but a ring does not solidify that. Oh, no, it's already been. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. like, no, I think I, a ring, too, I mean, thoroughly solidifies. A it ring, because, a ring. because if you get blown out against the, against the Warriors in four or five you games, should. you're going to forget about it real quick. But that's what you should get blown out because your team is that bad over, as a group. They're not, they're not that good. So the fact that people are going to say, look, look, he lost another championship. Like, if you really think about the teams he takes to the championship, yeah. they're not that good for Seriously. the most part. Seriously. So it's like just enjoy what he's doing. Like at some point he will get four, five, six, six rings. I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't. That's ambitious, but okay. So, so far this postseason, seven. I, he can go to any West team right now and be a champion. Yeah. It's just that easy. Yeah. He goes to the Pelicans, are they champions? Hey, hey, hey. He can go to basically. Any team he lands to, like they're contenders. And, and, and if anybody thinks I'm stupid on this, just think about what I said earlier. He took one group, got rid of all of them, <laughs> bringing a whole other group, and he's in the championship. So I'm pretty sure any team he lands to in the West, seriously, <laughs> is I mean, champions. I mean, they're contenders immediately. So far this postseason, if I'm not mistaken, seven forty point performances uh, in company with Allen Iverson in single postseason. Two of his series, they've been at a deficit. The Indiana series, they started off 0-1. The Boston Celtics series, they started off 0-2. He knocked off a number one seed in the Toronto Raptors, pretty much ruined Dwayne Casey's life and got him fired from, from Toronto, which is which is tough, right? I, uh, come on. Look at that. Look at, look <laughs> at all the yeah. yeah. You get somebody fired? You get somebody you know, fired? Man. Come on. So LeBron has been on quite the run, but Cap, for the second best player in this series, Kevin Durant. He left OKC, won a title last year, won finals MVP. If he's able to double that up this year, what do you think that means for him and his legacy? I mean, it further cements him as one of the best players we're going to see in the past 20 years. Yeah. Um, but, it's, again, it's going to be so tough for him to shed the narrative of, of being the bandwagon jumper. Right, right. Um, that's going to haunt him no matter what. So he can win three, four, <laughs> five more championships with this Warriors team as his, as his president constituted, and everyone's going to clown on KD for going the easy route and attaching himself to the Warriors. So, no. <laughs> Look at his face. Everyone still brings it up. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Do we even know what Jerry Rest did when he won his championships or lost his championships? All right, do you want to explain? How many he well, lost or won or Magic John? No one remembers stop, after a while. Stop for one second, though. Does our audience even know who Jerry West is? No. The so logo. 10, 15 <laughs> years from now, 
no one's going to remember. All they're going to do is look at the stats. It's like, oh, man, this no, man was good. No, when retires in five years after he retires, no one will remember. Yeah, no one will remember. five, six, seven years, until he retires, it's going to be the dominant narrative of his career. But you know what? Also, we're in a different era than those players were in because in the social media era, everything kind of lives much longer. No, than no, you just got to study basketball to know, hey, Jerry West. Oh, he lost, what, nine times? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. One and seven. That's, yeah. We'll talk That's about tough. him. That's tough. <laughs> But I mean, he's on the Sox. Yeah, it was very different back. But then. I mean, this is the same guy that he won Finals MVP on a losing team. So that's impressive in itself. I mean, it wasn't like he wasn't showing that, that, that's up. That's what I said, man. It's LeBron like, should have done. Only, it. only it's like only 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 the fans and the media put like legacies attached to rings, not knowing that. Listen, a ring is a team. Yeah. Like you got to have a good team or a great team yeah. like no matter how good one player is if he doesn't have anybody to help him right. you're not going to win a ring so there's 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 superstars hall of famers that's went through the league but they didn't have they didn't have anybody with them to help him get over the hump no, that's a fair point i mean i mean I'm, you know so when it comes to oh jordan won six rings he only has three well you know give him scotty pippen and dennis Rodman, <laughs> yeah. and a whole bunch of smart motherfuckers around him <laughs> And not some foreign coach, you know, uh, who just came in from overseas and don't know half our names, and we go to the championship and we lose. Uh, give me Phil Jackson. No. I'm pretty sure he would have six rings by now. That's a fair point. <laughs> I mean, as much as I want to get y'all's predictions for game one, I want to say that throughout the week because I feel like I know where you're going. I mean, you put it on Twitter. We know where you're going. Uh, yeah. But I think this guy has a trick up his sleeve. I, I don't know yet. You know, I got I to gotta weigh out all options. What's the I got to weigh out all options. I don't get what the I got to look through all the stats of every game. You know, he's like, you know, he's like a beautiful mind. He just starts writing numbers. You got to write. I really have, I'm really like flabbergasted right now that you're trying to think of ways that the Cavs can actually beat. Oh, I'm excited for these official predictions, but I don't want the Cavs to beat because I want my family friends ring. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) I I can't wait to see you working that one day in the show. Oh, as soon as I get it. (laughs) Calling Jason and Jill like, what's happening? (laughs) Get all them cubes. (laughs) All cubes. (laughs) All right, oh, keep keeping it moving here. Should we stop comparing great players from different eras? We're going to debate Kobe's take on the MJ versus LeBron debate. This is fair or foul? All right, so in response to LeBron's fantastic Eastern Conference Finals, Kobe weighed in on the whole GOAT debate between Michael and MJ. Uh, and the Black Mama took to Twitter to air it out saying, quote, We can enjoy one without tearing down one. I love what he's doing. Don't debate what can't be definitively won by anyone. Hashtag enjoy my five. Hashtag enjoy my six. Hashtag enjoy LBJ Quest. So obviously Kobe going to bat for just enjoying these guys for what they are. Obviously everyone brings something different to the table. Everyone's quest has been a little bit different. Um, and also Kobe clapped back at one Canadian uh, nice. radio host who was clowning on him, saying he doesn't belong on Mount Rushmore um, and calling him out for some other things. And Kobe clapped back at him saying, uh, safe to say I'm focused on other mountain right now, but I'm guessing it's hard to fathom athletes supporting other athletes to be great. So clearly Kobe doesn't want to hear you say, picking one side of MJ LeBron debate, but that's kind of not what we do here. We kind of try to wait into here. But, guys, fair or foul, is it time to put the whole GOAT debate to rest because it seemingly just is ramped up to new levels every single year with LeBron doing crazier and crazier yeah. things? Gil, I'll let you take the floor on this one first. They're unfair. But, I mean, debating is part of what people do because you can never win it. So it's one of those arguments that everyone loves getting into because they get to just argue, argue, yeah. Fake facts versus reality versus nothing. And no one actually loses. Yeah, no one loses. You know, so it's a perfect argument, you know, when you debate against somebody now versus somebody's, yeah. you know, in the past. Yeah, I, I think it's fair for Kobe to kind of put this to rest. You know, like like Gil said, it's just an endless cycle. You never, it, it's just never going to end. Like, Unless these players play against each other. Like, y'all don't give happen. a shit. I don't give a shit what kind of analyst you put. Like, there's no statistical, n- nothing. Nothing. You know, so the fact that they can't play against each other, it's just an always been argument. Yeah, and it's and it's always based on what era you grew up watching. Yeah. So if you're a nine if you're a nineties guy and you watched MJ, you're not gonna give as much respect to Kobe or LeBron. You just have to like Kobe said, you have to appreciate their journeys and their respective careers. So we have two fouls. I, I have fair on Kobe's point, but I, I, I mean foul. Kobe no, Kobe is right that you can't like it's all they're all different type of players. I mean, all three of them. It's um like Kobe and Jordan are more of the same as in their demeanor to score. LeBron is an all-around player. But LeBron LeBron was 
a freak athlete like Jordan. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> it's it's weird. So it's like one of those things where it's like if I had to if I had to go, it'd be like, all right, Jordan's as best pure yeah. score, one A, Kobe one B. But I think it's like you said, it's like overall player, LeBron one A. Yeah. You know, so it's like they have their own type of greatness. You can't you yeah. can't just say, all right, he's one, two, and three. That's just not fair for any of them because they're all different. Yeah, it's like you said. It's like they're two different, different players. They're two different it's, like, players. it's like two different species you're yeah. trying to compare. You know, it's like two great rights and a bear. It's like you can't compare those. And is it fair for guys like the old school greats, like, you know, your Bill Russells, your Larry Bird, your mm. Jordans, who kind of paved the way for excellence and then kind of get thrown under the bus by the new age kids who kind of vouch for LeBron and ride really hard for a KD or whatever as being the GOATs? After watching that Houston game last night, this new generation can't say a thing. Like, wait, 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 wait. wait. I've never heard anyone ever say Bill Russell was the GOAT. <laughs> nor Shaq, Bill, nor Magic, Bill nor Simmons, Bird. Maybe. When, when was the last time somebody said they were the GOAT? Well, Bill Simmons uh, won a – I'm mean, sorry, Bill Simmons. Bill Russell won a ton of titles with the Celtics. I'm pretty, different NBA back then, but listen, still won listen, a ton of titles. I think Bill Simmons in his book in 2009. Listen, had, listen, listen. Bill Russell number listen, two. Listen, 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 <laughs> listen, listen. We're just going to be – we're just going to be fair here. Oh, I know he's about to say. To uh, Bill Russell – Bird, magic. <laughs> when Jordan came along, <laughs> your name <laughs> off the pedestal of goat was gone. Okay, yeah, was I haven't heard them being a the goat since the eighties. <laughs> since what eighty seven, eighty eight? Yeah, yeah that, that, that that's a ooh, that was, damn. That was I haven't heard the goat under their names in a long time. It's been a little while. Like I was about like five, six. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. But I mean, woo! <laughs> I mean, Jordan's been up there for a while. I don't know how. <laughs> woo! Oh, man. Woo! Well, you should respect your elders, though. Yeah, I respect them. <laughs> uh, my man slam- slandering Bill Russell right now. I respected him before like 87, 88. <laughs> then it was just Jordan, 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 Jordan. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just facts. <laughs> woo! I don't even. Right. Like when I said, I thought it was. I, I thought it was a mistake. <laughs> Man, <laughs> like, I mean, the point, let's just fade. In the last 10, 15, the last eight, nine years, there's only been three debates about the GOATs. Kobe, MJ, LeBron. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. I didn't even think Kobe should really be in there, but that's just me. I, I agree with you. I mean, he was, uh, you can make the case that he might not be the best player of his generation. Uh, he's, not on, he's not on the NBA Mount Rushmore. Some, some vouch for Tim. I'm not saying this is my opinion. Some vouch for Tim Duncan. I'm not saying that's my opinion. I'm not saying that's my opinion. So, wait, 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 wait. Relax. You're confused now, right now. I have Kobe. Tim, uh, Tim, okay, Tim was a great power forward, Hall of Famer, yeah. probably best four man in the game. Maybe. But wasn't a go-to guy on his team. Huh? I'm just, I'm just going to throw it out there. Oh, that's, that's, but, I mean, I, but that was just Ginobili's specialty. So just let y'all know. Hey, I'm not okay. mad at it. Points. So, not mad at it. But that doesn't define if you're great or not. But just, you know. <laughs> you just go throw that shade real quick. No, no, no. <laughs> But, you know, Kobe, I mean, it's what Kobe's done, you know, it's, it's impressive. That was a great pocket pass worth of shades. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm Tim's kidding. my guy. I'm just saying, you know. You can't do – He's number – You can't slam I don't nobody even know, and say that's my I'm guy. I'm trying to see if he's if, – will he be two on my list? If power forward? Who's better? Who's no, I'm talking about in, in my, my generation. See, you got to remember, you, their generation starts before me, so. Yeah, it starts Because they're starting in the 90s, so, you know. I'm, their generation is like that. So, AI. Tim is before me, like – but see, would Shaq? Would you put T Mac in your generation or other, other generation? He's in. He would be in mine because he came in what, 98, 99? Ooh, no, ninety seven. Ninety seven. So he's yeah, he's still in mine though. Hmm. I would go Kobe. Tim. Kobe Tim. Cause you say Shaq. It's hard for LeBron not to be third. Which uh, all time? No, in my generation. Third behind. Remember, he came in 2003. From 2003 to 2007, he was yeah, a fucking defi- yeah, monster. Yeah, but if you're yeah. defining primes, though, guys had different primes. But I'm saying 2003 to 2010, I don't know if anybody's stats beat his in from 2000 no. to 2010. No. I mean, look. look for- That's an impressive. Like, his seven years was impressive. Those early seven years. Talking about LeBron? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's either, he's like, he can argue as third. Before AI or behind AI for that 2000. And who are the other two on that list? Duncan. Kobe and Duncan. And that's so you're saying LeBron could be third, and that's not even technically his generation. That's not his. You know, but you know, depending on when you get draft, you get like Lou told in the I said, you know, uh, CP3 will go down as a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, 14 time All Star, whatever he makes, yeah. and won't be top 10 in his generation. 
Whoa. So his generation would be LeBron, KD, Chris. Who, what generation? Remember, he, he got subbed in in ours. 2005. 2005. Yeah. So, so you, you put him in your, your generation? No, no. So 2005. So he misses our generation. Uh-huh. Then he jumps into this generation where the guys who start off the generation with LeBron, Kevin LeBron, Durant. KD, Russell, Wessel, Russell, James Harden, James Harden, like <laughs> James Harden, AD, Cousins, Jesus, um, yeah. Curry, yeah, he, make it he has a point, yeah. Curry, Clay, Clay, like because because that's what I said. By the time he peaks, because he peaks, like he falls off towards the end. So it's like by the time this, I mean, you still got Kate, Ky, Kyrie. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on. So he cannot be top ten in two generations. When he was a Hall of Famer, killed the league, but because he came in the middle of a generation, mm. or came, came in the middle of an era, you know, because the era starts at the beginning and end, so it's like he came in the middle of it, so it's like, ooh, mm. he kind of gets shifty. I smell an off-season topic. It's a good hypothetical. I like it. But we have a football story to get to, so nice. we have to end this right here. Let's do it. Um, if you've ever hated your job, you actually have something in common with a professional football player. And I bring that up because following a trade that brought Cassius Marsh from New England to San Francisco, the defensive end looked back in his time as a Patriot unfavorably and says that they took the fun out of the game. Shocker that Bill Belichick Water is wet. <laughs> Shocker. Shocker the Patriot way would not be fun. So, uh, yes, the defensive end told Eric Branch of, San, of the San Francisco Chronicle when asked about his time in New England that, quote, they don't have fun there. There's nothing fun about it. There's nothing happy about it. I didn't enjoy any of my time there. And he continued, quote, it made me for the first time in my life think about not playing football because I hated it that much. So, Gil, Mr. Foreign Professional Athlete, what expectations of fun should a player have once they start collecting a paycheck for the game that they love? Okay. He called it a job, right? Is it not a, a job? Jo- a job, you clock in and clock out. Do you not do that for sports? No. You never clock out of being great. When do you clock out? When There's no fucking you always trying to be great. If you're eating great, watching film. Like, like I mean, there, there's times where you can be watching the game right here and someone scores 40, you're like, oh, my God, I got to get in the gym. Yeah. I got to work on that. There's no clocking out of trying to be a great player. So the fact that he calls us a job lets you know where his, his mind is anyway. So he is looking for fun. Mm. There's no, I mean, fun comes with you played so well that season that you get to enjoy your time in the summer. Fun is we bust their ass by 40. Like, yeah. I never, um, I, I, job. Two things from this situation. Cash Hope he got fired from his J-O-B. <laughs> I guess but you collect a paycheck, it's technically a job. Yeah, that's just that's just part of being great. Okay. I'm not, right. Two things from this Cash is Marsh story. He went from a franchise in the Seattle Seahawks that's one of the most freewheeling and liberal franchises there is. They let players have a platform and a personality to go to New England where it's one of the most rigid franchises in all of sports. So it's no wonder why he didn't have a great time when he was a member <laughs> of the New England Patriots. And also... With the Patriots here lately, we keep hearing these same stories about, okay, we're not having fun. We're not, we're not enjoying this. So. When it ain't fun? But there's a the thing. They lost the Super Bowl recently. I guess, I mean, they won. Well, all right, do you want me to lay out the reasons why Cassius Marsh says that? Is he good? He, he's respectable. I don't want to hear him. He's, he's, he he's a say. rotational Is defensive lineman. Is he a premier lineman. defensive end? No, but the reasons that Cassius Marsh said that he didn't have fun there was, quote, they asked me to do a bunch of stuff I'd never done, like covering running backs and receivers and basically almost never rushing the passer, which is what I did playing on the he defensive wasn't line. To that work. I confronted <laughs> Belichick about all these things that were going on. Oh, that's why he wouldn't have fun. I won't get into detail, but it was BS things they were doing. It just wasn't, uh, just wasn't, a, I just wasn't a fan. And so I basically, without asking to get cut, I kind of asked to get cut. Le'Veon Bell came out that backfield. He wasn't trying to catch that work. That's what that was. <laughs> Gil, what you thinking, brother? <laughs> you fed up? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to answer this because it's like, I, yeah, this is a job to him, so I don't want to do the things that I don't want to do at my job. <laughs> like if a coach tells me, yo, hey, go guard this person because I think you can stop them. And I'm like, nah, I don't. <laughs> That ain't part of the job description, you know? <laughs> you know? I stick to PGs and the PGs only. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Do your do your job. <laughs> God damn. Like, serious? Oh, it's not a job, though. No, I'm saying it's a job for him. Do your, at least do that job. Like, I should be wanting to shut him the fuck down so uh, I can win this game. Like, <laughs> he said, I only stick PGs. No, no, like, that means I'm only stick PGs. Sorry, coach. I'm not going to stick two guards today. <laughs> like, nah, I'm not even going to switch on to him. I know that's a game plan, but nah. 
<laughs> nah. That's not part of my job description. It says PG under my name, and that's all I'm guarding. And that's all I'm going to try to be like, who uh, does that? All right, so final question for me. What is the- <laughs> you can top this? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the ultimate source of enjoyment or fulfillment as a professional athlete? For him. For him? Yes. <laughs> Playing the position he likes. <laughs> 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 oh my god I've never heard someone say that <laughs> and he just signed a two year extension with San Fran for 7.7 million dollars oh he's having fun so. he's, he's doing himself again hey, that's fun hey, right? that was fun <laughs> it that's out. fulfillment hey listen <laughs> Shit, give me that check right he left one job got a better job I, hey, can't well, be mad at it worked out in the end okay uh, never look at it as a job not sports no. not entertainment You when you start looking at it as if you start looking at entertainment as a job, then you're never going to be great at it because you're narrow-minded now. Yeah. And that's how I look at it. That means you have blinders on. That means, you know, you're only going to do the bare minimum of what it takes. You know, if you, if there's no job and, and you're having fun and this is your passion, you're going to try. And be great. You're going to try to be great. You're going to do what it takes to be great. Yeah. You know, there's no limitation to, you know, trying to be, trying to fulfill, you know, what you think fun is. No, that makes sense. And I th- like when Kobe's like Kobe now is probably having fun. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Probably whatever he considers fun. I'm pretty sure he's doing it now. Watching old highlights. Old highlights. <laughs> Look at me doing enjoying that. his enjoying his kids. You know, working on films. I, I'm probably uh, he's probably having more fun now than he did when he was playing. Of course. I mean, anytime you win an Oscar, that definitely seems like you're having a great time. But. That uh, ends the latest edition of Out of Bounds. For Adam Caporell, Gilbert Arenas, I'm Pierce Simpson. We'll see you once again tomorrow. This is Out of Bounds. Fun wasn't cooking Dan Tony for 50? No, no, that was fun. Yeah, exactly. I didn't keep that, but it was no job, though. I didn't look that was at it. You got a paycheck. For I was in the gym three times a day. Yes, That's and the reason job. you're in the, in the gym is because you got paid to be there. I didn't get paid to be in the practice gym. Out of, you, I got. We get paid to play in games and games only. Yes. I was in the gym Did three times a, a day. you paycheck? They get your ass in the no, gym. No, I wanted to bust the next person's ass who was coming to town. <laughs> like, I used to look at the, I used to watch and be like, that motherfucker got a step back? Oh, hell no. <laughs> and I'm at the gym. But Cap, like, I couldn't watch basketball. As much basketball as we watch with this guy, you know he's a little different. So, <laughs> I like, know, we you know. know. Like, I, like I, when I watch basketball, I want to go play it. Like, if I'm not playing it, I'm watching it. So there's no... What about now? Look, I try. I woke up at 7... Look, I woke up at 7.30. I woke up at 7.30 to go play at the uh, 24 hours. Yeah. You know, I had three assists. No, hey, I like it. No I, shot attempt. Why did you shoot? Because the, the way my body works... You know what's it, funny? It got to go through the first... <laughs> you know how I know you... Warming up. You 